Thank you very much, Karin. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Kirby, I'm getting a chance after four months, so I hope I can ask just two questions. Uh, yeah, that's up to Karim. Right? <laughs> I mean, after that statement, maybe just get one question. <laughs> Ooh, so should I maybe combine them or what should I do? I think you're wasting okay. your time, sir. Can uh, you please so, Mr. Kirby, I had asked you about uh, Pakistan providing weapons to Ukraine, and you said to ask uh, Pakistani official. Um, and what did they tell you? And the U.S. news media outlet published a story that Pakistan was applying, uh, supplying critical weapons in the Ukraine war and was getting huge funds from the U.S. I'm just wondering, there's so much emphasis on Ukraine war, but you're not highlighting one of your allies just right next door who's helping uh, in the war. And just combined with that, there was a huge protest, one of the biggest one against President Biden, just right outside here by the Pakistani community. The State Department was denying that Imran Khan was not removed under the U.S. But again, the U.S. media presented documents that he was removed after President Biden's uh, disliking for him or something. So why is this whole confusion going on since last one year? Well, first of all, there's more than 50 nations providing support to Ukraine, and typically we allow those nations to speak to what they're doing. Some, some countries give lethal capabilities, some don't. Some give financial assistance, some don't. Some don't want a lot of public attention on the support they're giving to Ukraine. So we respect that. So I'll let Pakistan speak for what it's doing for Ukraine. Uh, on your question about Imran Khan, I, you're, you're suggesting that there's some sort of linkage here to uh, his removal and these protests and, and some sort of uh, American action. This, was the, the, this is a domestic issue for the Pakistani people and the Pakistani government to speak to and to deal with. Go ahead, Catherine. Uh, we're going to move on. Go ahead, Catherine. Uh, John, do you think the Pentagon will have to begin conserving what it sent to Ukraine, given the sort of budgetary uncertainty? I think in coming weeks, you'll see a, a relatively consistent uh, and co continuity of support to Ukraine through drawdown authority. The Pentagon still has several billion dollars available to it in unexpired but yet appropriated uh, presidential drawdown authority. So, look, we've been providing security assistance to Ukraine about every two weeks, and I think you're going to continue to see that be the case for coming weeks. But absent additional funding by Congress, appropriated funding, such as the supplemental we asked for, eventually, you know, yeah, you're, you, you, you run into a hard stop there. And we want to make sure that, as I said in my opening statement, that there's no lapse that we're able to continue this consistent process of providing them support, particularly as we get into the fall and this counteroffensive continues. Uh, they, you know, there's about six to eight more weeks of decent weather here, uh, of good fighting weather, and we want to make sure that the Ukrainians can succeed.